All right, in this video, we're going to look at uh, generating an empirical rule graph using a spreadsheet. This is probably the more advanced way of doing this. Um, if you're looking for an easier way, um, you can try the hand drawing or the cut and paste method. Um, but if you started to like what you've been doing with spreadsheets and you want something really professional, this is the way to go. Um, now, all you really need to make these empirical rule graphs is a mean and standard deviation. And um, I'm just going to use a mean of 23 and a standard deviation of 5. But of course, those can vary, and those are given to you in the problem. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to create the numbers that are going to make up the graph. And we're going to start with an array for the z-scores. Now, how far you take your empirical rule graph out depends, but you want to go at least three standard deviations. Um, remember, a z-score is the number of standard deviations. So um, let's go out to four standard deviations in each direction. So we start at negative 4 on the left, and, uh, and then we're going to go by about uh, two hundredths. So we'll go to negative 3.98. And you go ahead and highlight these, and then just drag it down, and you can see where you're at. Stop when you get to positive 4. All right, and there we are at positive 4. Now we're going to go ahead and create the random variable values, that's x. And to get uh, x from the z-score, you remember you take the mean, which is 23, and then you add on the number of standard deviations given by the z-score. So we'll take the uh, standard deviation, 5, and multiply with the z-score. Right. And that way we copy that down, it'll give us all the different x values. So just double click there and you got all your x values. Alright, there's your horizontal x values. Now you want to get the y values, which are the probabilities. So your normal probabilities are given by the norm dist command. And we've been using this to find uh, areas and we'll always had cumulative be set to 1. We're actually going to set it to 0 this time. But x is just x. The mean is going to be 23, and the standard deviation is 5, or whatever they are for your problem. Cumulative, you want it to be false here, because they're going to use the probability mass function. So put a 0 there and close it out. And then you can, of course, um, get all the probabilities just by double clicking. Now we're going to need some uh, different ways to do this in terms of putting, you can go ahead and create a graph from this right now. And you can then go in and draw in the lines um, through insert, and putting the lines in, and, uh, and then put in little text boxes. That's one way to go about it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do uh, sort of a color-coded area thing. I don't know what's going to be quicker. All right, so in order to get these uh, different uh, parts of the empirical rule graph to be different colors, we need to have them be different data sets. And so we're basically going to need to uh, copy this over. And this is going to be our middle 68%, and then we'll have our 95%, and then we'll have our 99.7%. And then we'll have the uh, four standard deviations. And so let's go ahead and copy. And uh, when you copy over, you need to change x value. It should refer to b5 still. All right. It's trying to move it over. I just want it to still refer to that same value. And then uh, for these, we want to go ahead and copy all those down. Now we want to zero out the values that we aren't including. So let's look from uh, negative 4 to negative 3. Uh, that's the only thing we want to be non-zero is standard deviation. So let's go ahead and put in a zero here and then copy that. And then let's go ahead and go down to negative 3 and uh, paste. Right, because we don't want anything but the four standard deviation one to be from negative four to negative three. Now, 
from negative 3 to negative 2, we don't want anything but that third column. So we're going to have to do this two separate steps. Oh, went a little too fast there. All right, so there, only the third one is going to be from negative 3 to negative 2. All right, now only the second one is going to be here. So we're going to, of course, zero out this one to negative 1. And then these two. And it's nice to have them kind of overlap like that. It won't make a big difference, but I'm going to go ahead and do that. All right. And from negative 1 to positive 1, the only thing you want there is um, the first column there, the middle 68%. Went too far. So just go to positive 1. There we go. All right, from 1 to 2, we just want the second column. From 2 to 3, we just want the third column. So we can get rid of these two. And we're pretty much at the end here. Oops. All right. And then at the very end, we just want the fourth column. So let's put zeros in there. All right. That should do it. Now we just tell Excel to uh, take these four sets of data and to create a graph out of them. So highlight those. I leave out the x values. We'll put those in later. And go to Insert and select Area. And we'll just do the 2D area. And there's, looks pretty good already. And you notice that the horizontal axis is not labeled so if we go to right click and do select data you can edit the horizontal axis labels and of course we want to choose these so select that okay And we now have the horizontal axis labeled correctly. And uh, you can format the axis. You really don't want intervals between tick marks. The interval between tick marks should be the standard deviation, which is 5. Uh, maybe you want it to be uh, the number of values, so 5 to um, There we go. So we want them both to be 50. So you can see that we have these little tick marks drawn right where the standard deviation markers are. Um, we can also put in the 
uh, title and access labels. Go to layout and then access titles. You want to at least label the horizontal axis. And so uh, whatever this is, and then of course put your units in there. So, uh, whatever these numbers in our uh, data set would be, what is that? What is this the average of? So it could be heights in centimeters, or it could be weight in pounds, or could be money in dollars. Depends on the problem. One more thing we'd want to do is to label these legend things. And so we do that with the select data option. You go into each one of these and then hit uh, edit and then put in the name. And we'll do middle 68% for the first one. And we'll do um, middle 95% for the second one. And we'll do middle 99.7% for the third and let's do uh, four standard deviations for the last one alright and that looks pretty good so then you're ready to uh, maybe put a title on there or export it you could even label the vertical axis it's the uh, probability mass function and so that's a pretty professional looking empirical rule graph using spreadsheets.